serve up to 2,000 patients now over that time and do basically whatever they need to keep them living with dignity at home. That includes medical care, urgent visits, taking care of them in the hospital, oversetting uh, social services to help them be safe day to day, and then our office staff coordinate whatever they need in the home or arranging field trips uh, to come into the hospital center for specialty care. Um, so the team has a creative, kind of passionate bunch of people who have been doing this work for 10 years and I absolutely love working with them. It is a remarkable achievement. Um, and the, the fact that uh, not only have we succeeded uh, clinically, but that we have, uh, I think, won the hearts and minds of so many people at the hospital center. Uh, and that we've put together a team of people who are uh, so committed and so passionate uh, to this idea um, uh, that we've grown I think so close as a uh, as a group and um, have expanded our family really beyond um, beyond anything that I could have envisioned 10 years ago. Part of the program that the MPs um, really inhabit and enliven is the house call part. Um, the MPs will see a patient um, probably three quarters of the time in the house. The MP also will be the one to make the urgent visits as opposed to the doctor making the visits, um, seeing the patient in the hospital. So the MP, for instance, will be there when the patient does make a call. Um, when the patient realizes that I perhaps something is terribly amiss, or there's truly a medical emergency. And the MP will be able to come with um, all the equipment necessary to make very fast diagnoses, either to get the patient to the ER, not necessarily for diagnostic tests, but for treatment, or to begin treatment in the home. The, the best thing about what we do is that it's an amazing privilege to go into people's lives, for them to allow us to enter their lives and see, um, to share and to help them through this, this you know, often difficult time that they're having with, um, you know, dealing with a, an illness, you know, a chronic illness, or, or sometimes it's a real crisis in their lives. But I would say that it's a real privilege. So the, the moments I treasure most, I think, are when I think about the patients. And I can definitely think of one patient that I still care for, who's 96, um, who I think epitomizes how all those services, social worker, nurse practitioner, physician, and caregiver can come together. And that's a 94-year-old year -old woman who was living um, in an apartment building in a rather rundown situation when we met her. Um, she had what we might call a slumlord for a landlord. She had a little bit of psychiatric disease. And between us, we had a social worker come in and advocate for her to have better housing. So she's now living in a, um, a healthy housing environment. Advocated for her to get um, a bill payer to take care of her bills so her, her financial needs would be taken care of, including something as simple as taking her to her own dentist and providing her with new teeth so she could eat and enjoy life. And so she's now living independently in a wonderful senior apartment with an aide while we provide medical care in the house. Um, and it's just a transformation of her entire life. But I, I have one phrase that, uh, or quote actually, that I like the most, and that's by a fellow named Alan Kay. And uh, he is a, a software designer from the 1960s. And, uh, he said that uh, the best way to predict the future is to create it. And I think that that's what we're doing here. 